figure 9.17 shows a schematic of uh, seamounts and how they affect biology and oceanographic processes in their vicinity. So seamounts rise from the deep sea and of course provide a large and substantive obstruction to the uh, flow of, of water around the seamount. What this results in is the formation of what are known as Taylor cones and these lead to uh, anti-cyclonic um, circulation and also they can lead to isopycnol doming. So we see the doming uh, shown in the diagram of the taller of the two seamounts and we see the um, circulation patterns which set up around the flanks of the seamount. What this results in is uh, an upwelling or flow of nutrients from deep water to the shallow euphotic zone. And so typically over the uh, cap of a seamount, um, as shown in the left hand example, um, we are likely to see enhanced primary production and that will lead to enhanced secondary production leading to aggregations of uh, not only fish but potentially marine mammals and seabirds as well over these isolated areas of high productivity. This can also lead to downstream effects where plumes of uh, phytoplankton are seen downstream of the seamount. In deeper seamounts, uh, the seamount itself creates a physical barrier uh, for the deep scattering layer. So these are the zooplanktonic organisms which migrate up and down in the water column. And of course, the actual uh, cap of the seamount provides a physical barrier uh, which can trap the deep scattering layer, again providing rich feeding for um, predators such as squid and fish uh, and other organisms that can feed at those depths.